Winnie, I smell children. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sarah, I have a man. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am Mary Sanderson. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to my channel. Obviously, I am Mary Sanderson and happy Halloween! I love Halloween because in Texas, Halloween means that it's about to get cold and it's not gonna be freaking hotter than up in here, okay? I would say that I love Halloween because I get to like watch scary movies and do all this fun stuff, but like I already do that on a daily basis, so yeah, it's the winter for me. Guys, today I'm gonna be reading you guys some Halloween tales. <laughs> Hopefully I have like the sound effects and it'll be creepy or something. Hopefully. Guys, before we start, I need to show y'all my whole fit, okay? Ready? Let's just go. Winnie, I smell children. I, I, I smell children. Winnie, I smell a child. I, I, I smell a child. Winnie, I smell children. I, I, I smell children. Winnie, I smell a child. I, I did that. I did that. <laughs> okay, let's just get started, guys. Guys, before I start, I do want to say that I'm, I'm not going to show the stories on the screen, but I will be adding the link to where all these stories are if you want to read along and don't understand what I'm saying, or if you just want to go look for more scary stories, this website has a lot of them. Okay guys, this first story is called The Abandoned Factory. Four girls were walking home from a Halloween party in 2002. They were walking by an old abandoned factory that stood next to a field. The factory was said to be haunted, and many people in the area refused to set foot inside the factory's grounds. When they got to the middle of the field, one of the girls said it would be fun to explore the old factory. The other girls were scared at first, same, but eventually one of them agreed to do it just for fun so they could tell their friends at school about it. No thank you. Two of the girls climbed over the fence and the other two waited outside of them. I would be one of the two that waited outside for sure. After about 20 minutes had passed, the two remaining girls started getting worried. Suddenly, they heard a blood-curling scream coming from inside the old factory. It sounded like their friends. Terrified, the two girls ran all the way home. The two girls who went into the factory were never seen again. Today, the factory still stands. They say that if you dare to enter the grounds on Halloween night, then you too will vanish, never to be seen again. Okay guys, the next story is called The Bus Driver. On a dark Halloween night in 2003, a bus driver was traveling down a deserted street when he saw a beautiful young woman at the side of the road. He halted at the bus stop and she climbed on board. The woman took a seat in the back of the bus and stared straight ahead. When the bus driver looked in his mirror, he noticed that the woman was staring directly at him, never blinking. But when he looked back over his shoulder, the woman was sitting with her back to him. The driver began to get really creeped out. He couldn't understand what was going on. Then he came to the end of his route. It was the last stop and he pulled over and opened the doors of the bus. The woman didn't get out. She just sat there motionless with her back to him. The driver walked towards the back of the bus and saw that the woman was covering her face with her hands. He tried talking to her, but she wouldn't answer. He took hold of her arms and tried to make her show her face. The woman refused and struggled out of his grip. Finally, she spoke. You will not like what you see. And suddenly, she dropped her hands and turned. Her face was horribly disfigured. Lumps of flesh were falling off and her skeletal face could be seen beneath. It is said that they found the bus driver the next morning, lying unconscious outside the bus. He spent two weeks in a coma and when he woke up, he had lost all control of his senses. They put him in a mental institute, and this is the story he told from his cell. That was creepy. Oh my god, I haven't read these before reading them to you guys. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, guys, this next story is called Cemetery Garlands. 
It was Halloween night in 2004 and a young boy was being picked on by his brother and some older kids from school. They dared the young boy to go into the graveyard at midnight with a bunch of garlands and place them on each of the gravestones. Not wanting them to think he was a coward, the young boy accepted the challenge. It was a moonless night and the inside of the cemetery was pitch black. The rusty gates of a cemetery opened with a creak and the boy cautiously entered. He looked at his watch. It was midnight, the witching hour. Clutching the garlands tightly, he made his way to the middle of the graveyard. He was shaking with fear, but he tried to steady his nerves. He was afraid that if he returned without completing the task, the older boys would laugh at him. Moving slowly through the cemetery, he got the distinct feeling that someone or something was watching him. Finally, he managed to place each garland on a gravestone and his task was complete. Well, that's all of them, he whispered to himself. Just then, he felt a cold hand on his shoulder as a voice hissed, You forgot mine. <laughs> the Black Diamonds one Halloween night in 2005, a 16-year-old named May and her friends Irene, Kate, and Leslie were driving to a Halloween party outside of town. So, of course, they took the freeway, the car was slowing down, then it was running out of gas, but the meter said it was full. May and Leslie went to check out the engine. When they opened the hood, there was a hand. A lone, bare hand. They were so frightened, they couldn't scream. Leslie reached out to touch it, and it moved. This time, they both screamed and Irene and Kate ran out of the car screaming. They said there was a man with his flesh torn and a missing hand in the back seat. The girls ran and the car was chasing them slowly. May called her parents and Irene called 911 on their cellular phones as they ran. But when the cops and May's parents came, all four girls were soaking in blood. Not their own blood. The cops found a black gemstone unidentified in the driver's seat, covered with blood. The girls went ahead to the party. I would have gone home. The girls went ahead to the party. The address was just a vacant lot, but in the vacant lot there were many bloody black unidentified gemstones. What? Oh my god, I am confused on. Okay guys, this next story is called The Man in the Mask. On Halloween in 2006, my family and I went into the city because my mom had bought a car and she needed to make a car payment to the dealer. We decided to take my little sister and her friend trick-or-treating out there. My mom made her payment and my sister and her friend were trick-or-treating. It was getting late so we decided that it was enough. We had a long drive back home. We ate at a fast food burger joint and began the long drive home. When we were on the freeway, a car was driving right next to us and the driver was wearing a mask staring right at us. Everybody started to get scared. He was keeping up with us and had his head turned sideways staring for about 10 minutes. Then he just turned and looked ahead and drove past us. A year later in 2007, I was driving home one night. Again, it was Halloween. I was with my little brother who I took trick or treating. We stopped to get something to eat and we were on the freeway with lots of other cars. One happened to pull up beside us while we were going about 60 miles per hour. It was a guy in a ski mask. He just stared at us for 10 minutes without even turning his head. And we were going fast too. Finally, he turned his head and sped up past us to the next victim. Mass Murderer On Halloween night in 2008, there was a mass murder. The police were called and two homicide detectives went to investigate the horrible crime. Trying to tread on the bodies, the police took pictures of each one. One policeman saw something on the opposite wall, but he couldn't read it. He walks over to it and sees what looks like the numbers, 7734, written in blood. When taking pictures of this, he turned his digital camera upside down and showed it to his partner. When he pointed with the hand that the camera was in, he accidentally took a picture of the upside down numbers. The policeman was about to delete the picture when he realized something. The numbers were now a word. The word spelled hell. Ugh. Okay guys, this next story is called Trick Gone Wrong. On Halloween in 2009, two boys wanted to play a prank on the people in their neighborhood. There was a small road that ran right next to the cemetery. They decided to climb two trees that stood opposite each other. Then they both held either ends of a fishing line and stretched it across the path. 
When someone came walking down the path, the boys pulled the fishing line tight and it would knock the hat of anyone who was passing by. The first victim came down the path and they pulled the fishing line. The man's hat was knocked off and he ran away terrified. Pleased that their prank had worked, they decided to do it again. They saw a tall black shadow approaching and lay in wait. The kids got ready and when the shadow passed, they pulled on the fishing line with all their might. Then, they heard a ripping noise and saw a severed head rolling along the ground. Guys, that was the last story. What did you guys think? Some of them confused me a little bit, but some of them were like, okay, um, what the F? No. Guys, please stay safe this Halloween. Make sure you wear a mask if you go anywhere. And if you're actually watching my video for Halloween, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so, so much. Guys, if you've watched all the way to this point, make sure you add a little pumpkin in the comments so I can know. I mean, it's fitting, right? What else can we add? No, let's just let's just go with the pumpkin. We're not gonna go with the poop emoji like last time. I'm never gonna get over that, okay? <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know that it wasn't a lot of stories, but I, I mean, I tell you scary stories all the time. I figured I'd give you guys some Halloween tales for once. <laughs> thank you guys so much. I love you. Bye.